What is going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Cooking with Clams. I'm Will and I'm down here in sunny Key West. Today I am raiding Aaron's fridge. So I'm actually at Aaron's house. I'm gonna run upstairs and uh, go through the fridge. He said he had some grouper collars for me. Uh, grouper season just opened up. He went out and got a bunch. And uh, for, you, for those of you that don't know, the grouper collar is between the head and the filet. It's normally thrown away. And it's a lot like a chicken thigh. So there's a lot of meat in there, but it's encapsulated by bone and cartilage. So you can treat it like a chicken thigh. So that's exactly what we are doing today. And what we're gonna do is buttermilk deep fried grouper collar with hot honey. All right, let's go upstairs and grab these collars. All right, I'm back at the house and I have my grouper collar. Now, as you see, I split it down the middle. So I have two pieces that are enough for two people. This is a huge amount of meat and this is something that's normally discarded. Um, the collar is right behind the head, right before the filet. Now, it's also referred to as the neck or the throat. Comment below if you've ever had collar and how you had it prepared because normally it's gonna be a Japanese preparation but today we're going Southern. Uh, one of the things I went ahead and did was scale the collars because they do have scales on them. So I'm gonna put them in my bowl and then we are going to salt them even though we're frying them. And then I have my buttermilk. I'm gonna cover them in buttermilk. And we're gonna let this marinade for at least two, three hours. Um, while that's happening, we'll get our hot honey ready and we'll get our other ingredients ready. So I'm gonna go throw these in the fridge. I have my pan heating up on a really, really low, low heat. I don't wanna cook the honey. I just wanna heat it up and get it completely liquefied so that I can infuse my hot sauce and my red uh, cracked uh, red pepper flakes. Add a healthy amount of red pepper flakes. And a good amount of hot sauce. Now I'm going to continually stir this until everything is infused. It comes up to temp, and like I said, I just want to get it hot so that that liquid, uh, that honey really liquefies and infuses the uh, pepper flakes, but I don't want it to caramelize or burn or anything like that. So we're gonna go low and slow. and I'm gonna pour it right back into my container. It's been about five minutes, and as you can see by the movement of the honey, it's completely liquefied. It's nice and warm, but it's not cooking on the bottom at all, and it's infusing that red pepper and the hot sauce. And that's pretty much it. That's all you gotta do is just bring it up to heat. Obviously, the longer you let it go, the more that heat is gonna infuse. I think we're good. This could be dangerous. Like a pro. Look at that beautiful color. So on the side here, I took a little bit of buttermilk and an egg and just made an egg wash because what we're gonna do is take our collars out of the buttermilk, dip them in our batter, into the egg wash, back into the batter, into the deep fryer. Um, so our batter is gonna be really simple. Uh, just some all-purpose white flour, A 
good amount of cornstarch. That's gonna give it the crunch. That's gonna make it really nice and crispy. Go a little more. Some paprika. Some Lowry garlic salt. And I know this looks crazy, but when you're deep frying things, it can take a lot of salt. If you go too light, it won't taste seasoned at all. And a little bit of pepper. I wanna be able to see some of the herbs from the garlic salt and the pepper in the batter. That's when you know you have a good ratio going. If it still looks too, uh, too white and just like the flour, you don't have enough spices. There we go. All right, I'm gonna put these aside. I'm gonna let my collars marinate just a little bit more, and then we're gonna get an oil up to temp, which is gonna be 375. I don't want it too hot because I don't want the outside to burn before the inside cooks. So we need a nice medium temperature, and I'm only gonna do one collar at a time because they're pretty big. All right. I got my oil up to temp, I'm at 375, a little bit above 375 because when I drop that collar, it's gonna drop the temp in the oil and then it'll take a minute to come back up. So I got it about 380, 390. So here's my collar that's been soaking in the buttermilk. So we're gonna go once into our breading. Nice and coated. Then, from our breading into our egg wash. And again, that's just one egg and about a cup of the uh, buttermilk. And now, back into our breading. Bigger bowl would have helped, bigger bowl. All right, shake off any excess. We're at 380. Make sure I'm all covered in breading. In she goes. All right, I'm gonna give her a flip. And our temp is staying steady at 375, so we're good. All right, we're at about the eight minute mark. Um, I usually don't time things, but watching the GoPros, now I'm getting a good sense of time. Normally I just wing everything, but because I look at the GoPros now, I know how much time everything's taking. So we're at about eight minutes. Um, Collars, because like a chicken thigh is gonna take longer to cook than a chicken breast, are kind of the same thing. There's all bones and uh, cartilage protecting the meat. So you probably gotta go a little bit longer, but they're much harder to dry out, much harder to ruin that meat because of all that cartilage and bone. Wow. <laughs> wow. All right, onto our paper towel to get any excess, any excess uh, oil or anything off. And give it a flip to get the oil off the top there. Wow, look at that. I'm gonna cool that down. I'm gonna cook the other one. We'll plate this and then we'll sit down to eat. All right, 
let it rest for a little while. Our hot honey. And some scallions. Now, if that doesn't get your heart racing, I'm not just talking about the cholesterol. <laughs> that is a beautiful looking piece of fish. All right, so there we have it. Let's dig in. Holy cow. Also, that batter's good. Look at that. Look at that. Like I said, this is something that would have been thrown away. It's delicious. It's moist. It is absolutely, takes on that breading fantastically. The hot honey is amazing. That's a keeper. Now, that's enough for me. That's a meal. That's a giant piece of fish. And I have another one feeding someone else. You could do these as appetizers. You could do them as entrees. But again, sustainable fishing, use the whole fish. There's so many things that you can do with these parts of the fish. Honestly, this is one of my favorite parts of the fish for this reason. This reason right here. Look at that. Look at that. For this reason. And that would have gone into the trash. All right, if you like this episode, hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.